taking it. And So when you're looking at our scapula, right? Our scapula has specific diagonals, okay? If we're able to grab her scapula, right? We're thinking of, if we can get underneath that medial, you okay? Mm -hmm. Underneath that medial board, right? We can see the scapula moves up, down, right? Back and forth, right? For our functional patterns, you're gonna think of anterior elevation, right? It goes anterior, which it comes forward, and goes elevate. It comes forward and elevates. If it comes forward and elevates, that means the pattern diagonally is anterior forward, it creates a diagonal that way. That makes sense? Anterior elevation. Coupled with anterior elevation is posterior depression which is the exact opposite, right? Anterior elevation, posterior depression. The same way, the same mentality, we have posterior elevation, anterior depression, okay? So those are the four, those are the four main motions that we're gonna to use to facilitate with our scapula. When we're looking at anterior elevation, Right. If we're looking for anterior elevation, the scapula goes up and forward. So we can use the, we need to anterior elevate when we're reaching. Okay, reaching above us. Okay. Also, if we're rolling, when we're talking, we begin to talk about rolling, which is part of our functional task that we explore. If our patient has difficulty rolling, lie on your back. And she chooses to roll and reach up and across as she rolls, the main motion that we sometimes want to facilitate is anterior elevation, okay? If she, some people reach, roll down and forward, so we'll do that for, depends on how they move, that's how we observe the motion first. But we observe her and we see her reach up and roll away, that means for anterior elevation, we might need to facilitate that motion. Does that make sense? Okay? For anterior elevation, face this way, Okay. If you look at the picture, right? The picture, the pictures that you guys start seeing are all for resisted motions. Okay. Just to clarify, but even so, this uh, you don't get confused when I say these things. Okay. So you are for anterior elevation. We want to have to go that way. Okay. I want to do it facing you guys, and I want to do it the right way first. Okay. The therapist is standing behind the patient. I would stand behind the patient, but I'll block you guys. So I'm gonna go behind in the front, but this is where our starting position is, okay? When we're, in, when we're in there, we're behind the patient, I want you to grab the grab the scapula, okay? You have that medial border, and you guess, you see, can it, kind of just fix your hand right inside there, okay? So I want to regenerate that motion we can generate that anterior elevation, okay? One hand kind of just create that angle in that inferior, in the inferior angle of the scapula, okay? Stick it in there, find your positioning, and you're just gonna kind of bring it up, okay? The biggest mistake that you that people do when they're practicing anterior elevation is that they don't keep track of the trunk. So when you look at it, you see people do that, okay? as you lift up and over, right? Well, the biggest mistake that we find is that people also, they just push forward, okay? As opposed to think of it like a mountain or a hill or a bucket. The scapula has to go over the thoracic rib cage, so you have to go up and over, okay? So when I'm on the scapula, I am going up and over. Okay? If I try to just push forward, what happens? I just compress into the rib cage. Okay? So I go up and over and generate that motion. And you can see her scapula lifts up and far. Her scapula actually pretty, is pretty loose, so she's actually a really good one to work with. Okay? Any face? 
Turn around. Yeah. So when I'm working with Nicole and say I want to do my rhythmic initiation, I can grab I can come in here, feel that scapular going in for your border, and I say, hey, that's the force I want to generate. And you see how my, my arms never really get extended. Why don't my arms really try, why do I try not to extend my arms? Because I want to use my body to do my pushing, okay? I get a height I like, find that find a inferior angle, lock in, I'm just gonna generate as we're going, okay? I'm gonna take it to end range, right? If it goes any more, I know this end range, because if I go any more, she starts getting that trunk activity also, which I don't want, I just want scapular. And I bring her back all the way, and I sink it. With our shoulders, you guys might find it really easy to get end range without using your body, okay? But if you have someone who, is, who has compromised their lower extremity, and they spent all day transferring using their muscles in their shoulder, that scapula could be possibly glued down. So even though some people might be really easy in class, just remember, get your technique correct, stay tight, keep your shoulders so that when you have a tight patient, you don't get exhausted, because it could be exhausted. I can do a video of rhythmic initiation for 20 minutes, and my patient can, could still not get it, okay? Just be aware, you could be here for a while, so make sure you're taking your time. Again, I find a medial border for a scapular, right? Use my thumb, I anchor in underneath the scapular, if your angle, so I have a good grip on the scapular. I take as much of my hand on top, okay? I can do it passively. Okay, we're gonna do it together, all the way down, right? Whereas I did passively, now we're doing it together. You can do it on your own. Make sure she gets the motion correctly. And then, these are where our pictures come in, okay? I do my grip. I need to resist, good luck. I need to resist, I need to scapula into anterior elevation. So my positioning is right behind the position, facing the, facing the direction I wanna go, right? If I wanna go anterior elevate, I should be facing anterior elevation, because that's where my force are going. Dr. E has talked to you guys about the headlights, right? Yeah, if your SIS is first in the headlights or wherever I want to go, that's where my hip should be facing with everything that we do, okay? So we have our headlights facing anterior in that direction, if that's where we want to go. I want her to anterior elevate, so I can put one hand on, on top of the GH, the other one that way. Is it on the right track? Yeah, overlap hand, anterior GH and a cronium, okay? I sink down into my body and then resist anterior elevation. Okay? And then let it bring my ball the back, come back up. Okay? In that same position. And then as you notice, I'm going up and over with her, okay? As she's promoting the motion. So for me, when I'm, when I'm thinking about my rhythmic initiation, I'm saying, okay, Nicole here has trouble when she has trouble reaching up above shelves, she has trouble rolling when she reaches in front. You know what? That's capital. When I do my functional examination, I look at her cyst level. She was meant to cyst. I look, what does she have trouble with? Anterior elevation of the shoulder. That's what I want to work on. I do my functional range of motion breakout and then on anterior elevation of the shoulder. Go slowly, go fast, right? I say, hey, can you bring your shoulder up? Right? She and I, what am I looking for? I just, not your hand, just your shoulder, right? What am I, I'm looking for my? All right, basal ganglia. Okay, cerebellum. Synergy, substitution. All right, and I have to do it again. Can I have it, hey, this time when you do it, I usually do it in an external cue. Hey, can you bring your sh the shoulder to Tony? <laughs> to my external cue, right? Does it get better or worse, does it matter? I stabilize, I can stabilize at the trunk, I can stabilize at the arm. I don't care where you stabilize, because we don't learn stabilization in this class, but just don't stabilize at like the hips. <laughs> right? Well, you can actually. 
right? Stable here because you could have her core weakness as she's doing it. Um, I stabilize her, she does it again. It doesn't help. I palpate the agonist and antagonist, right? Make sure they're activated, okay? If not, then I do my, do my own T. Take it to end range, hold it, then I bring it up, right? And I get that same position I would be for my, because that's our position of power. I'm like, okay, it looks like she has true, she has trouble with initiation of that anterior, of that shoulder joint rolling. So what am I gonna do? Let's make an initiation. Okay, okay, you look like you have problem with initiation. We're gonna work on bringing it that way. That way you can like really be able to get off of that bed really <coughs> well when you're rolling, okay? I find that, I say, okay, we're gonna do this together. First, you're gonna explain, I'll explain to her what rhythmic initiation, initiation is. We do it together. Okay, make sure she's doing all through range and knows how I'm syncing with her, right? Now, do it with me. Okay, do it on your own. I take my hands off of her. Now she's getting a lot of rotation. <laughs> right, and then that same position that I was in to my MT, bring it up again. Right, and come back, do it again. Right, 